In this video we're going to look at the formation of tissue fluid which is quite a complicated topic and requires some understanding of osmosis from unit 1. We're going to talk about plasma, we're going to talk about tissue fluid and we're going to talk about lymph, all of which are sort of wet things in your body. Let's get started. So here's a capillary or part of a capillary network um, and around it we've got the respiring tissues which are going to need useful stuff transported in the blood. We've also got this funny looking capillary at the top called a lymphatic capillary or a blind ending tubule which is basically the entrance into the lymphatic system. You have many of these all around your body to mop up excess fluid which we'll talk about in a second. At the capillary itself we've got two ends. We've got the end which is nearest the artery which is called the arterial end and that's got really high pressure and a less negative water potential both of which we'll talk about separately and then at the other end we've got the venous end which I've done in blue to represent the fact that it's deoxygenated which is at low pressure and has a more negative water potential. Again I'll explain that fully in just a second. So at the arterial end of the capillary there's really high hydrostatic pressure and that's as a result of the contractions of the left ventricle and also the narrowing of the the blood vessels as we get down towards the arteries so what that causes to happen is the blood plasma from the capillary is going to move out and it's going to bathe the respiring tissues it's going to take with it all sorts of nice nutrients with it like oxygen and glucose and at this point we call it tissue fluid. Once it's left and is bathing the tissues, we call it tissue fluid. And this whole process is known as ultrafiltration, where we, we're leaving behind the big molecules, your red blood cells, your larger proteins and things in the blood. And that has a really important effect on the water potential of the blood as it moves down towards the venous end. It's lost a lot of water. It's lost a lot of the plasma that was making it have a less negative water potential. As it moves down towards the venous end, it's going to have a more negative water potential because there are relatively more solutes inside the venous end of the capillary. So what's going to happen? Well, most, that's 95% of tissue fluid, is reabsorbed at the venous end along with waste products from respiration and metab other metabolic processes like urea. So carbon dioxide and urea are reabsorbed along with 95% of the tissue fluid at the venous end of the capillary. And this occurs by osmosis because the plasma of the venous end of the capillary has a very negative water potential compared to the tissue fluid. So 95% gets reabsorbed. But the question is, well, what happens to that remaining 5%? Well, that gets mopped up by the lymphatic system. So it gets absorbed by this blind ending, ending tubule or lymphatic capillary and it's going to move around the lymphatic circulation which doesn't have a pump like the heart, it's just moved by the contractions of skeletal muscles and it's going to get dumped back into the main circulation later on. It's not important where. So there's the remaining 5% being absorbed and that's that. So there we go, fluid absorbed by the lymph or the lymphatic system, uh, is reintroduced to the main circulation via various ducts or lymphatic ducts around the body. And when the fluid is in the lymph system, we call it lymph. Dead straightforward. So plasma when it's in the blood vessels, tissue fluid when it's bathed in the tissues, and lymph when it's in the lymphatic system. Now, we, as I just said, lymph moves when, a, when spinal muscles contract, and the interesting trade-off for this is if you don't move very much, if you're paralysed or if you're elderly and infirm, your lymph will gravitate towards the lower body, which will result in swollen feet and ankles. Which is why it's important that if you're elderly or looking after an elderly person, you get regular massages on those feet and ankles and keep them elevated to make sure that the lymph can circulate around the body as effectively as possible. So, we should talk about kwashiorkor, which is a, a malnutrition condition, and why it's important to eat lots of protein. So, if you have less protein in your diet, it means you're going to have less products of protein digestion, that's amino acids in the blood. The result of that is you're going to have a less negative water potential at the venous end of your capillary. And you're going to meet, that's going to mean that less of your tissue fluid is absorbed. So instead of maybe 95% getting reabsorbed, you get 90, 85, 80% getting reabsorbed. So that's not as good. And what we see as a result of this is what many, many charity adverts use on television. They have the distended stomachs that's caused by the accumulation of, of tissue fluid. 
And that's everything. That is the formation of tissue fluid. Watch this video a couple of times and make sure you understand how water moves by osmosis with regard to water potential and you will have it sorted. Thank you very much. Like, comment and subscribe.